Hello, I'm Mrs. Strange and I'm the librarian here at Woodcrest Christian School. Today, I will be taking you through how to access and navigate the databases that are available to you as a student. Academic Search Premier and Explorer are two databases that are available to you. They are very comprehensive and include a wide range of topics and fields of study. Therefore, you can use them for English, science, math, history, and more. So before we get to the ins and outs of how to use the database, I'm going to show you how to access the databases. There are two ways that you can access the database. The first one is through our library page on our school's website. So you will go to wcss.org. You will then go ahead and click on either middle school or high school. You will scroll to the left and you'll click on the library link. Now on the right hand side, there is a blue button below our library's hours and it says Academic Search Premier and Explora. Go ahead and click it. This will redirect you to the database. Now if you are accessing the database from home, you will not see this page. Instead, you will see an EBSCO sign-in page. Now, EBSCO is the host for our databases, so they do need to verify that you are a student at Woodcrest Christian School and that you have permission to access the database. So you will go ahead and sign in with our school's credentials, which I can give to you if you come to visit me in the library. Other than that, if you do access the database from school, you will get directed straight to the Explora homepage. You will notice that you're on the right site because on the far top right hand corner, you see our school's name. A second way that you can access the database is if I have trained your class personally doing a database training session, then you already have access to the library database training content on your Google Classroom. Therefore, you can go ahead and go to that classroom and there is the database URL that is in one of the posts. That will also have our school's credentials in case you need that information. So you will notice that you can also sign in and create a personal account on the database. Now this is beneficial if you want to save your searches, save articles that you've come across, um, if you want to build folders for each of your class, perhaps you are doing a paper for English and history at the same time and you want to keep your sources separated, I will encourage you to go ahead and create your own personal account. Um, I will also encourage you to use your student email and password to do that. That way you don't have to remember another set of login information. You will also notice on this homepage that you will only see Explorer's name on the top left corner. Do not worry, you still have access to the Academic Search Premier database. They are just embedded, so you will always see Explorer, but you are getting the benefits of both databases in one. So there are two types of searches that you can do using the databases. There is a basic search option and an advanced search option. Now, the basic search option is really helpful if your teacher is giving you a lot of freedom in what to research for your topic. So for instance, if your teacher wants you to write a paper on Helen Keller and they are okay with you writing about anything about Helen Keller, this is a great way for you to get to know more about Helen Keller at the very beginning of your project. So let's go ahead and type in Helen Keller at the very top of the page. Now this search bar works just like Google, so this is where you can just type it in and you can just go from there and it will give you a lot of results, very broad, very general. And as you notice, you, the database is already populating options for you to go by biography, the story of my life, but we're just going to go ahead and keep it at Helen Keller so that I can show you um, the array of results it will come up with. So this is the search result page. So now you've noticed the database has found 350 results for you. What is nice about the basic search option is it will always give you a topic overview at the very top of the page. This is a great source for you, again, if you're trying to familiarize yourself with your topic or subject. 
it will give you a summary of Helen Keller, her early life, her accomplishments, um, any further reading, important people, the impact of any of her works. So this is a great starting point for any research paper. It also includes hyperlinks and further reading just to maybe give you inspiration on what direction to take your research paper. A nice feature about Explora also is they have an audio toolbar. So for those of you who are Audible learners, the database will actually read this article to you. So let's go ahead and go back to the search result page so I can explain a little bit of the features on this page. So again, you have your results, but there's 350 results, and that kind of seems like a lot. So you're going to want to narrow it down perhaps to maybe some requirements that your teacher has given you. For instance, your teacher could have said, I only want um, academic journals or reviews or periodicals. So on the left-hand side, you will see all the ways that you can filter your results. So let's just say your teacher asked you to just do review topics. So you'll go ahead and click reviews. And now it has shortened your results. And let's go ahead and say that your teacher is limiting your publication dates and doesn't want anything used that is before 2010. You could also change the years and scroll over until you get 2010 to 2020. And now you only have 32 results that you need to search through, making it a lot easier for you. On the right-hand side, you'll notice there are two icons, a magnifying glass and a blue folder. These are useful, again, if you've created your own personal account on the database, Explora and Academic Search Premier. You can go ahead and save any sources that you come across that you want to read later. So you'll just go ahead and click the blue folder. As you notice, it turned yellow. And at the very top of the page, you'll notice that your folder now has a piece of paper sticking out of it, telling you that you have, su that you have successfully saved your source. And the magnifying glass, if you just hover over it, it will give you a broad synopsis of what the article or source contains for you. So that is how you do a basic search option using the databases. Now I'm going to show you how to do an advanced search option. Now this option, of course, is going to be more detailed and this will help be helpful if your teacher is requiring specific um, prompts for your topic. So let's go ahead and say that your teacher is asking for a paper about Jane Eyre, but your teacher wants you to write specifically about the ideology of Jane Eyre. So using an advanced search option will help you narrow down those results found in the database. So back on the home page, you will notice that there is a link for advanced search under the basic search toolbar. Go ahead and click that. And now you are taken to your advanced page. So on the very top of that toolbar, you are going to write Jane Eyre. So you'll notice that there are drop-down options. So you'll go ahead and use those drop-downs to help you narrow down your results for your paper. So I have already typed in Jane Eyre and I've clicked on subject and you'll also type in ideology and go ahead and click on abstract. So what I am telling the database to do is to find sources for me that are on Jane Eyre as the subject and that ideology is used in the summary of the article. So I'm really narrowing down my options of what I want for my results. So go ahead and hit search. And as you can tell, the advanced search option gave me one result. So I know that this result is very detailed and it's exactly what I need for my paper. Now, I do want to encourage you that if it does come up with zero results, do not be discouraged. There are thousands upon thousands of articles on the databases. So all you have to do is just play around with your terms, play around with the drop down menus. Maybe an author used a different word than ideology, um, or maybe they used it in a footnote instead of the abstract. So you kind of just want to play around with that. So now that you have found your article, you're gonna go ahead and click on it.
And now I will show you just very helpful uh, tips when it comes to what you will see once you open up any article. Now this is whether you're using the advanced search option or the basic search option. So on the right hand side, you'll notice a toolbar. Those toolbars are very helpful. You are able to save this article to your Google Classroom, to your Drive, you can print it, you can email it if your teacher's requiring you to email it. Um, you can export it, you can add it as a hyperlink if you need to. Um, but the most helpful tool on here is going to be your site tool. So that icon is this little yellow piece of paper and you'll go ahead and click on that. Now what this tool does for you is it does the work of formatting your citation for your Works Cited page. Therefore, you don't have to fret about it. It does it for you. So you'll just click on that icon. It will open up a little window at the top of your article and you'll just have to scroll down until you find the citation your teacher is requiring you to do. So for example, if my teacher is requiring me to do a Works Cited page using MLA format, I will scroll down to MLA and there is the citation all ready for me. So all you would have to do is just highlight it, copy and paste it to your Works Cited page and you're done. And that is how you access and navigate the databases. It has been a pleasure showing you how to use Explora at Academic Search Premier. If you need any help on researching a topic or need help accessing the databases from home using our school's credentials, I will be more than happy to help you. Happy researching.